Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sam here. Today I want to do something that is especially good for beginners of the game. So let's talk about everything transport. Let's talk about transport hierarchy, which is good, which is not good, where to put it, where not to put it, um, transport, just tra transport everything. Now, I'm aware that a lot of you guys probably already know this stuff, but I'm getting a lot of requests to do these types of beginner videos. And it's also good for us more advanced people to just review these basic fundamental things about transport. So just quickly, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and also my Instagram is there if you want to chat, and I am a town planner in real life, so yeah. Um, <laughs> so I built this whole city just to show you guys. Now it's very, very rough. It took me about an hour to do it. Um, so in terms of layout and things like that, don't be too harsh of a critique because it's really just about the transport for this video. So. So, 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 let's talk about trains. Trains are by far the most efficient type of way to get around for the greater map of your area. Um, they're, so they're really great for getting through long distance areas. They're great because they have a really high capacity. So for example, if I click on this one right here, 240 people versus like a bus, which is 30. So they're great for high capacity. Uh, they're also great for making a hub. So for example, if we go into the downtown area, when you have your station in a little town or a city, by having that station it makes a hub which basically allows you to connect all your other bits of transport to this one area so people can transfer easily in this area and it just makes it a lot more easy. Trains are fast so they can get around quite easily and just to show you guys, they're really good for connecting up areas. So we have this little town here so there's a connection there and then it goes over into the downtown area and then it connects up to the end of this I guess downtown goes up here connects to another little town and then goes over here connects to another little town another reason why trains are so efficient is because they don't really have any interference because when you look at a train track in general if you just go to a map trains they go out into the rural areas they don't really interfere with road crossings and if there is a road crossing the cars on the road have to wait for the train right so the train is given priority so for example here when it goes through all the cars have to wait so the train gets through a lot quicker trains are really they're really diverse so you can do them for like i've done here connecting up smaller towns or you could do it for more inner city areas so you can connect suburbs or you can even connect dense areas to other dense areas by pro probably putting them above ground elevated over the road so they don't have any interference so but the only downside with trains is that the station makes a lot of noise so if you put if you're putting them in a more residential area maybe make sure that there's a sh some shops that kind of block the noise pollution or some trees or even just make sure that there's a clinic nearby um, because they do complain in the game about noise pollution secondly let's talk about monorails now i don't really use monorails just because there's other options which i prefer which is probably the tram but let's talk about monorails anyway because they are in the game now monorails are noisy so you should be really really careful where you put them i believe they create more noise pollution than train stations so whenever you put a monorail down you should probably put them inside a either well, basically everything except residential, so office, industrial, or commercial areas. So, for example, this area here, it's in a commercial area. There's no houses nearby. Now, monorails are really, really great because you can, basically, they can glide through really dense areas without having any interruption by traffic. So, monorails, they're always elevated. They never go on the ground. And... I would recommend that you always use them in more dense areas. I would never use them in, for example, an area like this over here, which is low residential. Monorails are just really great for right in the city, in the downtown area. Um, they're great for connecting up office areas and other just dense areas. Now, another thing about monorails is that they're really great for connecting up really big whatever infrastructure event type buildings. So, for example, here, I've used it to connect up from the from the cruise ship terminal and then it goes up through the office and industrial area and then it comes into the city area through the downtown area so going through the really dense areas and then it comes all the way over to the airport so I think it's really really essential to connect up these main areas so the main areas being the airport the downtown and the cruise ship terminal so monorails are more for inner city areas 
Uh, I never use them and you never see them going over long distances. You never see them go, for example, like a train that goes out into the middle of nowhere. So a monorail always stays in the downtown area. Uh, usually they don't really go in a loop. They usually just go from one point, so like I've done here, and then go back like that. So basically like a train. And yeah, so the main thing is make sure that they don't really interfere with your residential areas because they do create a lot of noise. But a positive about them is that they do have a large capacity. Now let's talk about trams shall we? I love trams because they're really really easy to put in your city. They can get around very very easily and a great thing about them is that they're quiet um, and you can put them basically throughout your whole city and they just go on the street but you can also disconnect them from your streets and make them go basically anywhere. So trams are great for I guess low to medium density areas i wouldn't recommend putting trams in really high dense areas because especially areas that have a lot of traffic issues because a tram it does go on the ground which means they're going to contribute to the congestion and the traffic so if you are going to use a tram in a more busy area maybe you should elevate it or just use a monorail so trams they are really quiet the, the capacity isn't as great as a monorail or a train the capacity is usually like i don't know 50 plus people maybe depending on which one you have and they're great for just going through like i said medium to low density areas so they're fine to go past residential areas because they don't really create much noise they're fine going through low density res uh, commercial areas and you can also use them to connect up to your industrial areas um, they're also really great for just connecting up your local hub areas so for example what i've done is if I go down here, I've connected it from the cruise ship terminal and then it goes through this kind of medium density area with some larger buildings, some shops, and maybe a bit of a tourist area as well. And trams have been proven to be much more relaxing in terms of using or being nearby to trains or monorails because trams, they are just like a car. They just glide past very quietly. Um, it's very easy to walk on and off. And it's not like this big thing where you have to go into a, to a big terminal, like a big train station, or you have to go upstairs to get to it on a monorail. So they're much more easy to get around, very relaxing, very, very flexible. And again, like the monorail, they are for inner city areas. I don't really use them for going to, I don't really use them for like connecting up different villages or towns like the train does. So they're just really great for less congested areas now keep in mind that they do create congestion because think of them as a group of cars coming through so you have to be aware of that and what outcome they might cause you so just to show you guys quickly so it goes from the this little area here which is a commercial area so it's a very very local very relaxed area next to the the cruise ship terminal and then the monorail is right there it goes through this bit of a residential area a bit of a tourist area and then it continues up the, and then it continues up this hill which is probably a bit bit wonky but it comes here connects up to this little suburb of the city and then it comes in and then I've used it as a loop for the city and then eventually goes over to the shopping center now if I just show you guys if you can follow the purple so purple comes along here um, and then it goes up this way goes up connects up to the shopping center it comes back down and off it goes now I've added one that goes the opposite way that just goes around the downtown area now if you look at it I don't know if you can follow but if I just go like that the oops just close that the tram goes kind of like this it kind of signifies the outline of the downtown areas the out the downtown blocks so I think it's really great for not the real downtown area but for the areas surrounding the downtown areas um, it's just a great way for them to get around it's a great little connector and i personally love it i can vouch for it it's very very efficient and very very flexible so this is the layout that i've used and um, yeah it's just really easy so next is the bus now buses are also quite flexible but a lot of you are using them incorrectly and i've noticed this because a lot of people will send me their city outline and they do the same issue now buses are great for 
low amounts of people so they're great for your suburban areas they're great for connecting up like suburbs they're great for getting you to the train station they're great for getting you to the shopping center but do not rely on them as your main way of getting around a city especially if your city is very congested because like the tram buses go on the ground within your traffic now unless you give them a specific bus lane that has no cars and trucks on it it's going to increase your congestion overall right so you need to be careful of that in general now the bus capacity isn't very big i believe it's about 30 for the basic vanilla one yep it's 30 so just be aware of that so definitely buses are not you are not going to be your first choice for your large infrastructure your, your large public transport infrastructure now just to show you how i've laid it out the buses are great for doing little loops so if we go over here so the monorail will come along there's a station right here now the people can just get off and they can go on the local bus loop now this obviously i wouldn't do a bus loop in a such a small radius like this but this is just an example so i've done this a lot so there's one little bus loop and if i go over to this town for example this one has the train station and then I've just done one little easy bus loop and then if they want to get to the next town or the next city they can just jump on the train so instead of doing a bus or a monorail or something it's just the train because the train is a really high capacity one now buses are sometimes good for long distance but as long as it's going from one small area to another small area so for example here we have this small area and then we follow along the green line which goes to this little area here which has its own little bus loop so i would not put a monorail here i would not put a tram because this is such a small area a bus is really suitable because the population over here is just very very small what is it i'm, I'm assuming it's just a few hundred okay it's actually a thousand but i've also done the same for over here as well so going from this point which is the ferry uh, which is the cruise ship terminal going up to this town here i would not put a monorail or anything else besides a bus going up here so i've actually put in a bus if i just show you guys quickly so it goes up through here it's a very very relaxed area there's not much traffic it's not really busy so you can get away with just putting a bus and then it goes up here and then there's their own little bus loop as well you go over here the same thing happens connected by the train then there's a little bus loop as well so instead of doing a bus line that goes from here into the city, they can just rely on the train because the train is going to be frequent. The train has a really high capacity. Okay, so I hope you're following so far because I know it's a lot. I know, I know it is quite a lot, but let's take it one step further, shall we? Let's go into the downtown area. Let's have a look at how I laid it out. So when you're in the downtown area, you have two, we well, have kind of three options when you're laying out your buses. The first one is you can just do whatever. You can just do it really, really windy and not really have any type of layout at all. The second one is you can do loops like I've done here, but on like a larger scale. Or you can do what I've done in this city, which is single road lines. So for example, we have this one that goes along here in the suburban areas. This one, which goes up here in the suburban areas. This one that goes along here in the suburban areas. This one goes through here. And then I have one that goes through, that cuts right down through the downtown and then it connects up to this one and then it connects up to this one here. So don't put too many buses in your downtown. Maybe just have one or two that connect up to, for example, your train station or your monorail or just whatever hub you have. And then you can use that train line to get the people out into the rural areas. So, so buses are more for your rural areas. They're more for suburban areas. They're not really great for high capacity, busy areas. Um, so really keep that in mind because a lot of people make this issue where they use buses only as their main bit of public transport, especially in downtown. And there's when you have a more when you have more capacity on a bus, that's going to generate more buses, which is going to generate more traffic, which is going to generate more issues in general. So keep your buses to a minimum in the downtown area, but we can put more buses in the more suburban areas like I have done here. Just one thing quickly, if you do have a really busy downtown area, you can maybe make an elevated single bus lane like this. So you have these ones in game that you can use. You can actually ban all other vehicles from going on these types of buses, bus lanes, so only the bus can go on it. Now that could be something that could really be beneficial to your city in general. 
So just keep that in the back of your mind. Now in terms of subways, I haven't put any subways in this city because it generally has the same principle as a monorail. So monorails, like I said, they go through your busy areas. They connect up all of your busy areas. So if there was no monorail, if I was going to put in a subway, I would put in a subway here at the cruise ship terminal. I would put one here in this office park. I would put one up here in this outer region of the city, which is also quite a busy office park industrial area. Um, I'd definitely put one here in the downtown and I'd put one out here going to the airport, but I wouldn't put them, I wouldn't make them go like all the way out here to this city, uh, to this town. I wouldn't make them go all the way out here and I most definitely wouldn't make them go out to any of these towns out here. Now you can possibly put subways in more low density areas, but if you are, I would put them, for example, in a cluster of shops. So this, for example, uh, there's a cluster of shops here, so maybe I would put one on the corner here with a few more shops around it just because the stations do create a lot of noise. So I wouldn't put them in a very re uh, residential oriented area because they're not going to like the noise pollution that comes with it. And then if we look at the other types of public transport, there are the this one here, which is the Blimp Depot. I never use this because to me it is just a bit silly. Um, and I know you guys are going to ask about it, but I don't really use it because why would you? I guess it's more of a fun thing. Um, maybe it's good if you have a town really high up in the mountains that's really not accessible by other types of transport. And then you also have the cable car here, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now, another thing that I haven't talked about are taxis. Now, I don't really use taxis in general, usually because I forget about them. But if you are going to put them in, Put them in your really busy areas. So I've got one here at the airport. I've put some in the downtown area. So one in the hub area. And I put one down at the cruise ship terminal as well. And I would recommend putting them in other commercial hubs. So for example, there's a little commercial hub here. So maybe you could put one there. Um, maybe you can put one up here, which I have at the shopping center. Maybe you can put one up here at this at this train station or other train stations as well or even nearby schools or things like that. So just before I finish the video, just one quick thing, monorails versus trams. Now I'm sure I'll, I'll get asked about this um, and well that is a bit steep right there but it doesn't really matter. Um, trams versus monorails. Monorails are more for your denser areas, they're more for larger capacities of people whereas trams are more for your more local areas, just your little shopping street um, connecting up maybe just your small shopping centers and things like that so trams less traffic monorails more traffic and then just bus versus train um, you can use buses for long distance but only for going to really small towns trains are definitely more appealing because of the large capacity they have preference they have the first priority in terms of intersections and they're just a lot faster for getting around now that's basically all I wanted to talk to you guys about so just to wrap up and make it easy to follow the hierarchy would go trains then monorail slash subway and then tram and then bus um, you can p probably put, I don't know where taxi would go, but then after bus would be walkability. Now, I haven't done anything about walkability in this video, but if you go to the previous video, which I will link above, that covers everything about your pathways, your cycling, which is very, very important for public transport. It's very, very, very important. Don't forget about that because without a great pathway, what's the point of public transport if it's not connected well? So that's all. If there's any questions, please let me know and I'll answer them down below. And also, if you guys want this city, I will upload it on Steam as well. And I'll put the link in the description below if you want it. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, I've covered basically everything. I'll probably think of a whole lot of things later and I'll be like, ugh. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.